All right, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, session revitalizing our Drupal communities. My name is Tim Doyle. I'm with the Drupal Association, and I'm happy to moderate this session. Uh, we have four great speakers today. We have Amy uh, Swackhammer with the University of Maryland, Anoop John with the Drop Times, John Doyle, no relation, um, with uh, DC Area Meetup and with Polygon Digital, and Nina Ogor with Drupal for Gov. Um, it's going to be an informal conversation. Uh, I'm happy to moderate this for two reasons. One is I'm relatively new to the Drupal Association. I've been there for about a year and a half, almost two years. Um, and I, every time I come out to local events, I hear more and more about the importance of the, the meetups and the local association, the local events. Um, one thing that the association did this year was I put a staff on globally reaching out to uh, community organizers, folks that put together uh, local meetups, uh, find out what, what the status of these meetups are globally. So we're doing that in, in uh, Asia, in uh, Europe, North America, of course, but also South America and Africa. Find out what the needs are of these organizations, what struggles they're, they're having with, with uh, revitalizing meetups, and then put together an action plan where what can we do at the DA? We're a small but mighty staff, but what can we, how can we support? So this is a, a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I want, I do, uh, would like that before I have the um, speakers introduce themselves very briefly, um, I do want to thank our sponsors. As you can see, there's a lot of them up here. Um, Drupal GovCon is, this is my second Drupal GovCon. Um, it's a fantastic event. I heard they had over 700 registered. Over 700 registered. Over 700 registered. That's fantastic. Um, I was in Drupal Camp Florida in February. That was a fantastic event. So I'm trying to get out to as many of these local events as I can to understand what the needs are. Um, but these are only possible with our sponsors. So thank you to the many sponsors for, for Drupal GovCon. Um, let me start with, uh, if, if our speakers could just introduce themselves. Um, we won't go, in, well, we'll go in order. Amy, do you want to introduce Hi. yourself? Um, hello, I work at the University of Maryland. Um, I restarted our UMD Drupal uh, user group. Uh, about 10 months ago, there's a lot of uh, Drupal sites at UMD, and um, we've been uh, gaining momentum since we restarted. We have about 70 people on our list now at our meetings. We've been getting about 20 people, so I'm excited to see uh, where the group will go. Anoop. Uh, hey, my name is Anoop John. Uh, I am the founder of the Drop Times. I've also been running an agency, Sixware Technologies, for since 2006. And Anoop used to live in Herndon, Virginia, right? He used to be local. And now, global. Now he's well. He's always been global. Now he's Texas. <laughs> yeah, I've moved to Texas. Yeah, so if, you know, uh, he's, he's Texan, so he had to come in for this. Yep. Um, before yeah. I introduce myself, people in the back, if you want Arnold moving forward a little bit, so we don't have to scream and yell, that would be amazing. Can you pass the mic? Because I don't think your voice is there. They're definitely not. They're definitely not. Pass the mic? Um, uh, you want to try passing the mic? Good. Oh, smart. We need the mic for recording. There so it is. Good. There it is. Thank okay, you good. for that reminder. Oh. John. <laughs> Nina, I'm sorry. Whoever's next. I'm not sure who's next. All right, so I am Nina. I am a part of Drupal for Gov, and I also work for Angelina. I have been a part of Drupal for Gov for about 12 ish. Um, I'm director of operations, I spend a lot of time administration and lunches, and I'm so thrilled not to do that anymore. Um, but I've been in the Drupal community now for forever, it feels like. Many of you, if you've attended even one year before, recognize my face. And some of you may recognize my very loud voice if you attended more than one year in the past. Um, but yeah, that's me. And I'm John Doyle. Uh, I run an agency in the D.C. area called Digital Polygon, uh, but for this session, more importantly, uh, I just started off the Maryland meetups again uh, in the DC meetup group. Uh, and I've been talking to Vixel and Debug Academy about maybe getting three of these going that we alternate on in Maryland, DC, and Virginia. Uh, so that we're not competing, but we're really fostering the community uh, across the area and trying to organize that together. Um, and then uh, also a board member for Drupal for Go. So, um, yeah. Do my part to get back as much as I can. All right, the uh, loops. Oh boy. Uh, 
How do we get out of here? Uh, three fingers slide over. Thank you. Woo. Um, okay, so uh, I want to go over the benefits of joining Drupal communities. Um, really, what we find is that the, the local meetups, two things. One is where people, especially young people, beginning their careers, begin their on-ramp into Drupal. Um, and so the health of these local communities, in terms of not only sharing knowledge, but networking for not only employment purposes, but just for making contacts with who is doing what in the Drupal community. These in-person meetups are super important. Um, it also allows people to get feedback on, they can test drive a presentation or drive, test drive a, a topic. And it can start at a meetup, and it can go to a regional, and it can go to DrupalCon. Uh, so it's an on-ramp for building the skills for making presentations, for, for refining presentations, and so forth. And then I think the other piece of this is advocating cooperatively. The Drupal community is a very collaborative, uh, by nature, by open source, you know, value is a collaborative community. And these local uh, meetups, local groups that are active, kind of give life to that collaboration by allowing people to, to really get to know each other, to feel much more comfortable collaborating. It's not just online, they can actually to meet and get to know people and work a little bit in a different way than if they're just interacting online globally. Um, so it kind of reinforces that collaborative value. So I'm going to put a question to our, uh, to our speakers. What would a revitalized Drupal community look like to you? Who wants to start? Want to go down the line? Yep. Thank you, Tim. Um, well, as you mentioned, I feel like um, one of the values of, of having a really vibrant Drupal community would be being more welcoming to newcomers. Um, I remember back when I first used Drupal maybe 20 years ago, there were a lot of like Drupal camps and inexpensive opportunities to learn things and meet people. And there was a, um, a lot of content to to beginners. I feel like that really um, helped me feel like it was a little more achievable to, to get into uh, Drupal. Um, I'm a librarian, and there used to be like a, a niche, um, like a Drupal for Live email list where people would talk about, because we have some shared interests that aren't going to cloud a lot of other websites. And I feel like if the community was revitalized, and very active, there would be more opportunities for more like birds of a feather style communication. I feel like that would also be really helpful. Um, for me, I think uh, the biggest part of being uh, of a community is about uh, inviting new people into the community and then taking them on a journey from being a user all the way to being a creator, right? Uh, I believe that the fundamental um, aspect of all of us, all of our open source community is about we are a community of creators. So people getting people involved, getting people to use Drupal, getting people to helping them on that journey and building relationships. And then the local events are local communities are especially important in building those relationships. And that relationships in those local communities will translate to that global fabric, right? Or what makes us as a global community. And that will help them on their journey to becoming contributors. And that will then translate to events being more vibrant, new volunteers coming to run events, new organizers coming to run events, more events happening, going out into other organizations to run the events, going to schools and colleges to run the events. So I want that vibrancy to uh, uh, happen in global communities. And that's what I would uh, like to see. That's great. You guys can answer that also. <laughs> so, I want to give an example of how we are trying to realize that um, to forgot. So in the internship program, um, one of our internships got hired with uh, the Department of Missouri. We work with our sponsors to do partnerships. One of our sponsors is going to be donating a training um, for one of our interns. So that's amazing, to believe it's very cool. Um, but the thing is, when you have new people, you want to absolutely invite them in any more, but then you also have to train them so they can go forward and not just stay in that one place. So that's some of the ways that we're doing that and helping everybody the community. Yeah, I'm going to take uh, I think I agree with that. Uh, let's take a slightly different take on this too. Uh, but first, like, how many people in this room have been in Drupal less than five years? About a fifth or an eighth of the room. Yeah, I think I think that under uh, that underlines some of the problem that we have, and I think at DrupalCon it was the same. A lot of us have been in the community eight, ten, 
12 years. And, uh, you know, I think it's just the fact that Drupal isn't sexy anymore. Uh, React is. <laughs> and, you know, back in the day, Drupal was, the PHP was the new technology. It was the fad, and we didn't have to try as hard. Um, and the revitalized community, my mind extends beyond developers. And, you know, right now in the market, low-code, no-code solutions are dominating the CMS space for small and medium businesses, even enterprises for point solutions, right? So, you know, back in 2010, that wasn't the case. Everything was homegrown, it was developed, focus build, and things are evolving. I think we need to evolve as a community as well. And we need to attract more of the content marketers, more of the uh, other roles that participate in your website than just developers, and I think not that we'll ever give up the developers, like we need them to build a platform and uh, you know, I'm a developer, like I'm a little wise so that like this is hard to like think about that transition for me too. Uh, but I think it's super important for us to to take that into account and maybe get out more into the wider community um, and show what Drupal's power is outside of just Drupal events. And I think the web summit was an awesome thing last year. Definitely more of that to, to build a community. Thank you for that. Let me make two comments on that. One is, yeah, the Web Summit, uh, the Drupal Association presented at Web Summit Lisbon last year with four partners. Um, and it was an attempt to market Drupal outside of the community, outside of the community event. So it was very interesting talking to people. Um, I was surprised that we had really two, two cohorts of folks that came up. One was, oh, I remember Drupal. Is it still around? I heard that. And the second were people who had other digital um, uh, programs, and they say, hey, how do we interact with digital? We want to get our marketing tool in here, or we want to do this. So it's very interesting once you get outside of the, the, the believer community, the Google community, um, and, and start talking to people about what resonates with them. Um, let me uh, also make, because it wouldn't be a, a Drupal event this year if we didn't mention the word Starshot. Um, it's, it's mandatory. Um, let me ask a question, ad hoc questions that are off the cuff. Um, do you think, what, what role do you think Starshot will play? John, you mentioned bringing new people in beyond just developers. Starshot is really focused on um, marketers and ambitious site builders, and making it more accessible. Any, any opinions from the panelists on a role Starshot might have in revitalizing Drupal communities? I think it's extremely important. Um, and I think Drupal is an extremely powerful platform, but it's hard to use out of the box for non-technical people. And Starshot is going to fix that. Um, and I think that's what we need to spread the adoption and drive that forward. And it's not like we're going to lose what it does. It's going to be a starting point, just like uh, back in 2010, there was Drupal Gardens. Right? I don't know. How many people here started Drupal in Drupal Gardens or, or had experience with it? <laughs> Handful. One, two. Um, you know, when I started my career, I was at a government agency, and the first POC we built was Drupal Gardens to POC it to the stakeholders in the government. And this was like, I guess 2010, so great as that was, that transition was happening. And uh, having tools like that to showcase functionality is extremely important. Uh, but also there's the bar of entry, uh, which everyone thinks is hard to use and, um, and difficult. So I think it's, it's extremely important to drive this forward. I'm really happy to see that initiative moving forward. Great. Thank you. Let's go to the next question. And I will comment on the last one. Nina mentioned you get new people in and we have to train them. And so I think there's an aspect to Starshot once it's up and launched being used as a training tool for those new people. Um, question, we have a few questions here and we'll open up for folks in the audience to ask questions. Why and how did you go about trying to restart the group you're associated with? And did you run into hurdles? And if so, how did you overcome them? Um, thank you. Um, so I got uh, to UMD a couple of years ago. I started the libraries and they had just moved their main website to Drupal. Um, and I hadn't been using Drupal for a while. So I looked around for community resources that would help me figure out like uh, what was going on. Um, 
everywhere. And I, you know, the university has um, a shared theme that a, that a lot of the Drupal websites here use, and I figured they would have a Drupal user group. I found the website of a kind of um, dormant user group that had stopped meeting um, during the pandemic. And it became apparent to me that it would at least help me if the group, <laughs> if the group existed. So I tried to ask around and find people who used to run it, other people who had been members of it, um, seeing if they would be interested, and just kind of uh, um, that thing started from there, tried to find other groups of people who would uh, be using Drupal who didn't previously be in the group. And um, I feel like it really seems that there's a pretty strong interest in it still, so, so that's very heartening. Um, I feel like one of the main challenges, so when I restarted the group, I sent out a survey to people asking things like, what are you hoping to get from this group? And things about formats of meetings. And so a lot of people said they were hoping to network with other people at the university who use Drupal and get to know them. But they also said they were more likely to attend meetings if the meetings were online and they didn't have to go somewhere in person. So just kind of working on how we can still build interpersonal connections between group members, um, even though we don't meet in person anymore, I think is one of the challenges I'm still working on trying to figure out how we ever Yeah, uh, so for the Maryland meetup and the DC meetup, uh, me and Oshroth have been talking about it on and off for like a year now, and I finally pulled the trigger this summer. Um, and the reason that uh, I think it's super important, or the reason why I started it was because this was the same reason I got out of my house after COVID. Like I wanted that interpersonal connection with people, and I wanted to have the, you know, a chance to connect with the community. And, you know, for me, I started my career as a developer. I translated that into management, into running my own business, and Drupal did all of that for me. And I want to be able to talk to other people and help other people along their journey, wherever they are in that uh, in that path. And this is one way for me to do that in person. And you know, I'm just fortunate enough at this point to be able to have a space to host it in and run it. So I said, why not? Um, and you know, I'm just using a co-work space and. They give us some free training rooms to use to host the event, so uh, it's a really, really nice opportunity for that to come back and um, get those connections in person, and you know, get some old people, meet some new people, and hopefully attract some some additional people in the uh, in the office to, to come and join and see what it's all about. Um, but yeah, it's really for me, it's about the connection, the interpersonal connection, and, uh, and helping other people uh, learn more about Drupal and what it can what it can provide. I was just going to talk about uh, this this conference. So coming out of COVID, like it was extremely hard. We tried to be virtual, and then nearly killed our organizing team, like to, truly. Um, so this is our second time after COVID coming back, and I think one of our biggest hurdles was that like we're pretty burnt out as a team. Um, all of us are volunteers. I've been here like. Well, we years, almost everyone who is hired. Thank you. <laughs> um, but almost everyone who is hired up uh, has been doing this a really long time, and we really want new people. Um, I love this event, but you know what I'd love to do? Like attend it like, as an attendee. Like how crazy would that be? And I can't really do that um, as I walk around with my little walkie-talkie everywhere. <laughs> but yeah. Um, that was one of the biggest hurdles, and it continues to kind of be. We don't have people that really want to step up to the plate. Um, and people were like, I would love to volunteer for this one day or for these three days. But it's a full year event. We plan for months at a time. We're planning right now for next year during this conference. Um, so if you're interested, <laughs> see me after, and we would love to have you. Uh, yeah, so Nina pulled me in this year, and I can uh, verify that all of that is true. Um, and I think one thing for everyone to understand that, yes, the Drupal for Gov is entirely volunteer, except the interns. Uh, there's a small, small budget for interns, but all of this costs money, right? Like, times have changed a little bit. We don't have a free venue from NIH anymore. Like, all of this is powered by funding. And sponsors are super important, community engagement is super important. 
you know, keeping this a free conference is extremely important. So the first question that we had, and how do we get more people and get new people? Like, we don't want to, we don't want to change uh, that. But you know, we need to get additional people in the community to see the value in building this and the relationships. And you know, that takes marketing. That takes all of you pushing within your organizations to talk about how valuable the event is, to see people in person and connect, um, and not just. Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of companies it comes down to dollars and cents, and, and, and that matters too. But um, there's something to be said about the community that we built here, and, and the, the what everyone gets out of this community uh, and, and these events is super important. So I uh, just want to reinforce that. Like, you know, how do we? If you guys have ideas for uh, trying to hurdle this funding, especially all the campuses here have heard have been struggling with financing, and um, you know. How do we do our part to try to support them and, and do that as well? Maybe I can add uh, one last point mm -hmm. to that. Uh, I was involved with uh, the free software user group in my city for almost uh, 10 years. Uh, what we used to have was we would have monthly meetups, uh, which a lot of uh, regular people would come in. And then on top of that, every month, we would also go to an education institution and conduct a session there. So our biggest uh, inflow of new um, um, members to the local group was from the uh, schools and colleges around the area, and there we wouldn't take, uh, we wouldn't try to bring new people to the event, but we would take the event to the new people, and that was our easiest way to um, bring it. It was quite effective, and we we had a constant flow of new volunteers. We never had issues with uh, finding people to help organize the event or even growing the leadership roles in the local community. That's very new, and I think that's a great example of a way of doing this. You know, I would, I would comment too on something Nina said about you know the need for new people to come in. You know, there's volunteer. A lot of times we're asked to volunteer, and volunteering at the level of show up, tell me what to do, and I will do it. Right? I'll man the registration desk, or I'll you know help guy here, or I'll be a room monitor. That's great. I think what I see, what I heard in Nina's comments is there's a leadership need to step up and take on a role in the community. And it has to be time limited. You can't do it for 10 years, 12 years, 14 years. Um, and so I would, I would ask you, please volunteer at local communities, show up and see how you can help out. But also, if you've been in the community and you have a sense that you want to give back, think about it as a leadership role that you will take on for one, two, three years to run the conference from soup to nuts. It's, it's a little bit different perspective than just showing up and, and volunteering your time. It's really saying, I'm going to take on some of the ownership of this to give back. I mean, I think that's really important. That's what I see in the people that run camps, that's what they're doing. And we have to recognize that it's time limited. No one can do that for 10 years or 12 years or 13 years. It is time. It has to be this kind of natural life cycle of someone stepping up, taking on the, the, the ownership, and then passing it on to the next people. Okay, let's go on to our next question. All right, what avenues do you see? Use to share information about your events in a way that welcomes new people into the community. What avenues do you use to share information about your events that welcomes new people in the community? And how can people find out what presentation and involvement opportunities are available? Actually, John has helped me a great deal, like better than how to spread on social media. Um, but one of the other ways is a lot of face-to-face -face conversations. As kind of a little bit terrifying and as daunting as that kind of seems, I would say a good amount is just word of mouth, um, especially for new folks. If you have a coworker who's just like, oh yeah, I should go do things, you're like, no, 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 you should come with me to this event. Here's the day I'm going. Come with me. And I think that's how a lot of times um, camps and also our organization, even um, Drupal.com, Drupal.gov, get started and continue to thrive. Um, it is a lot of word of mouth. Yeah, I think that energy is contagious, right? Like, I'm very introverted, uh, which might be hard for some people to believe, but 
like coming up in Drupal, it took me like four or five years to go to my first Drupal meetup, and it took someone sitting next to me, it's actually Adam Weingarten, uh, it's like, John, we need to go to this. Uh, are you going? And like, just hyping it up. And, and we made it happen, uh, and, and never really looked back after that. So, you know, uh, it, it's really important that we as a community also make an inviting place and encourage people to come and experience it because there's the fear of the unknown, right? It's a lot of people I don't know, they don't need a Drupal, I, I don't feel, maybe I don't feel safe coming to these events because I don't know anything about it or, uh, you know, so I, I think that is a really, really good point uh, for driving that. Um, <clears throat> for us, really we just use social media and the Drupal DC meetup group. Um, so meetup is a great place to host events and things and, you know, Carl and I think Stan, we're, we're running this pre-COVID and there's over a thousand users in that group that you know, who are already interested. So that was a great mechanism that we can leverage to, to push that out. And um, you know, we can build more of these in different local cities. And you know, feel free to reach out to to me or anyone here. We can help push it. Drop times is a great place. It's a lot of visibility. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk any more about something that we have been using. Um, I would say quite effectively over the last few years have been. Uh, the LinkedIn as a channel uh, to reach out to people, uh, let people know about our events, uh, specifically around sessions as well, and uh, feedback around people, thoughts about thoughts from different people. Um, so I would request all of you to actually check out the Rob Times, not just Rob Times, all the content that gets published on LinkedIn around Google, and not just check it out, but also actively engage. Because when you check it out, you're just a consumer. When you are engaging, you are actually creating value for people in your network because they will see this Google content. So if you all engage actively on social media channels around all the Google content that goes out, we will be able to amplify all of this into a large audience of users with very little cost. Right? And even engagement is a very small cost for all of us. And we have seen that happen very effectively for drop times or the last three years on LinkedIn as a channel. We started from zero and we have some really amazing visibility at the moment. Uh, and uh, I would request all of you to explore that and get out of our nerd, nerd shells and start in the Thank you. All right, let's go to the next question. Um, in recent years, Drupal camps have been struggling to find sponsors. What do you think the community can do to improve this situation? Who wants to take this? John? John mentions the money. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, as a sponsor of a lot of these events, I think uh, it's continuing to like shift how we bring value to them. You know, for me, it's it's easier because I came up as a developer. I see the value of the Drupal community, and that it gave me this opportunity, and I want to naturally give back to that community uh, that supported me through this. I think you know a lot of smaller agencies over the last five years have been gobbled up, acquired, consolidated, maybe gone out of business, and a lot of the, the larger players don't see the value in these camps outside of my staff is going to go and get hired by someone else. Uh, and I think that's not like it takes marketing from us to change that perception and to clearly market the value of these events and the sessions and the learning to, to companies and, and people. Uh, and you know, I think we're not the best marketers uh, as a whole, but I think there's a lot of things that we could talk about to you know, better spread the word about what else is here. And I think it also requires us getting a little bit away from only catering to Drupal developers. Um, you know, get more content tracks in there, get more marketing tracks in there, where Drupal is powering it. Um, but we're getting this to a wider audience, so uh, we want to have more people to come in and promote Drupal and be champions of Drupal. And then, you know, I think we can probably showcase, uh, from an attendee perspective, the benefits and values of open source and what it can do for your career. And, like, I mean, I think me telling my story that sometimes maybe inspires other people to get involved because you can't really do this in the same way with Microsoft or Adobe. Like those license fees are outrageous. 
and they won't give uh, free environments for a lot of the more advanced features for, for people to do this. And, you know, Drupal being open opens a lot more opportunities for people to freelance and contract and look how vibrant that community is here. So how do we better sell that value as well, and how do we expand that to other personas and, and users that would be able to take advantage of that? Um, maybe I went a little past the sponsor stuff, but um, I think it all bubbles up to the value that the sponsors can provide and, and give. Yeah, I don't think we get sponsors. That is an excellent question. Um, you know, in 2019, we had 43 sponsors. 43 sponsors. We had 33 booths. It was crazy. And this year, I worked my ass off. Okay. And I got 26 sponsors. Now, I'm not upset about that because we have an event. I'm very, very happy. If there are any sponsors in the room, thank you so much for sponsoring. Um, but I can't answer this question really well. Um, I'm struggling. Every camp organizer that I know is struggling. And I think it goes back to John's point is that um, it's really hard to sell. And I keep saying in my head and also to people, the Drip community is unique because what you put into the community, you absolutely get out of it. Like, the reason why we stay here for years, decades, is because we get so much out of it, whether professionally or monetarily or however, you're getting things that are tangible and valuable to you, but they're not always tangible and valuable to companies. So I don't know how to get sponsors. Um, maybe that's your own. <laughs> so there is a small experiment that we're trying to do in bad camera in for this year. Uh, we are trying to reach out to uh, user audiences through local uh, business associations uh, to see if we can organize uh, a few sessions targeting businesses and try to bring that audience to the event. So that instead of just being a pure developer um, event, we can bring some business content and see if we can bring more business audience to the event and hence add more value to the sponsors. Uh, and in the process of reaching out, we also want to take the names of the sponsors out to these local groups. So it's not just the visibility at the event, but also the visibility that is generated as part of marketing. But it's still an experiment. I've had some experience where you had to go experiment with those kind of things and just try different things out and share that information about what works. One small thing the Drupal Association did, we announced in January that um, anyone that, any company that sponsors a local camp will get credit in the credit system um, on Drupal.org. So if, as long as they're sponsored up on D.org, then those automatic credit, which will help you in the, uh, in the credit system. So small way we can support, but it's another way of trying to help sell in the market with the benefits of doing this. All right. Okay, next question. Where can the average Drupal community member get started? Where can the average? So I'm not sure what you mean by average. But the typical Drupal community member, how do you get started? All right, um, I think that some of this, um, you, you mentioned a little bit of this before, Tim. I feel like you, know, you can attend things and that it's great to attend events, but I think taking the next step is like the most important thing. Um, if you see a call for volunteers or to get involved or to present, like you're looking for people to talk about things, I think that really helps um, people organizing events. Um, and if you don't see something like that, maybe reach out to the people running your local group and say, hey, is there anything I could do that would be helpful? I think that would be, uh, it would be appreciated by me. Yeah, it would be appreciated by others as well. Uh, uh, I, I would uh, again point to some of the experiences from the Face of the user group. Uh, we used to have sessions on basic usage of different software, right? And that would get a lot of people to try out this software and they would come up with a lot of questions. So one of the most fun activities that we would have in the local group was about helping other people in the local group. That's a big way of uh, contributing, building relationships, feeling like they are adding value, feeling like being part of the community. So I, I think Starshot is going to be a 
big part of that as we go into the future because now we have something that we can use to show, hey, build your website in an hour, right? Put all these recipes together and hey, your website is up. And that's something that people can start using and then you have a lot of questions. How do you change this? How do you change that? And the local groups can become more active. Instead of being hardcore tech uh, groups, we can also be more inviting to uh, new users who are coming. Uh, I'm going to change the frame of this just a little bit. Instead of asking like what you can do, say, I have expertise in X. Can I help with X? That is so much more helpful. Um, and I say that only because if someone comes up to me and says, I want to volunteer, my mind runs a mile a minute. <laughs> so we have like all these different things. Can you do any of that? And it is super overwhelming when I do this to anyone. I know that. But I can't really help it. But if you come up to any of the organizers and you say, I am excellent social media, can I help you with social media? I'm like, oh my god, yes, here are all the passwords, because we're not protected here. Please help me. <laughs> so you all are subject matter experts in many things, not just Drupal, but you know, you're excellent at sending communication and emails. You know how to write that perfect tone in your email. We need that. Organizers and camps and things like that need that. So take whatever you're really good at and you feel like you can contribute and lead with that. Yeah, Starshot. Uh, everyone should sign up for Starshot. Uh, it's a good <laughs> way to, to get back and involved. Um, no, I think I think you guys said it pretty well. Um, if we can encourage other people and help explain the value of giving back, I think that would also help. Because, um, you know, I keep coming back to the why, right? Like, why would you do this? Yes, it takes time, yes, it goes in. Why do you want a leadership role at, at Drupal for Gov? Because it's a great thing for your resume. Because it's a great thing for your career. It's a great opportunity to show that you can take on leadership responsibility without someone having to take as much risk on you making that leap within an organization, or maybe you just never have that opportunity because the organization doesn't have a role for it or an opportunity for someone else to step up. So, you know, if we can tell these stories better and help focus on why this is valuable to an individual, why it's valuable to a sponsor, um, I think that'll help us get in. Uh, maybe that's not the exact notion on how they get started, but uh, I think it can lead into us uh, uh, talking about that. I think those are great. Those are great comments. And you know, it's the first I've ever heard of that. But that's a great tip for volunteers. Start with what you're good at or interested in, and don't just have a volunteer say, "I'm X. I, I can do X Y. Well, I'm interested in Y. How can I help?" I mean, that's, that's the first I've heard that tip. That is a great tip for people volunteering. I love that. All right. Okay, ways to get involved in the Drupal community. Well, it's just, it just got much brighter. I'm going to go here, start, and then that's right. Okay, so, it's, um, so obviously we have ways of getting, let me open up to, to ways that you would suggest people to get involved in the Drupal community. We have a, a number on, uh, on the bulls here, and we'll open up for questions from the audience. If there's any questions or comments, of course, you want to make. Do you want to go right to it? Let's go right to the 10 minutes or less than 10 minutes. Let's open up for. Um, questions or comments, maybe, you know, um, they have, they want to make a comment and have a balanced react to or a question they have. Um, Mike? Something that I've noticed um, at Drupal Camps is that sessions tend to kind of gravitate toward more advanced items. And, like, I have, I would love to go to a Drupal Camp and see. Uh, here's how to create content types, here's how to create some views, here's how to affect views. And like I'm an organizer of uh, Florida Drupal Camp, which in my opinion, by the way, is the best. But, <laughs> but um, I, I, I literally get out there and I tell people, hey, submit a session on how to create a content type, how to do views, maybe how to do some more advanced views. I never get those submitted. So something that people can help, help out doing is um, submitting those sessions, number one, because I'll accept it. Like, I'm telling you right now, if you submit a session to Florida Drupal Camp, I'm going to accept it. And number two, like, if you're a camp organizer, 
put those calls out that like this is how you onboard. If, if you can if you can show someone who doesn't know how to make a website, how to create a content type, and how to create a view, they're hooked. That's a great great comment. And I was I was at Florida Drupal Camp uh, and I took I had to take the intro course for my mom to begin to understand. And that was super helpful to just understand all the other sessions. Uh, hi. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, are there any plans uh, to extend the warranty program to give credits to the companies for hiring unexperienced developers? It's quite challenging to, to get a job for unexperienced people, like, and so are there any plans? I, I can answer that. Good question, John. And then, you know, I don't know what to say about this, but... I'm super happy to answer that. Yeah, so there is an IXP called Experience Developer Initiative um, where we are working to um, come up with um, a, a process to reward companies for hiring um, newer experienced developers, um, focusing on the community contribution system and the community contribution credits. So there's definitely progress. Um, myself and Carlos and Spina have been working together on it and we're hoping to have um, um, a kind of a proposal for the process because it's going to involve the DA and Drupal.org and jobs at Drupal.org. Um, our goal is to have a proposal ready, and now that I'm saying this out loud, I'm screwed because now it has to happen <laughs> by September 1st, so in a couple of weeks. So that's what's happening at this so. Great, thank you, John. And then, Nina, you mentioned entrance proposal. Is there another question comment? Oh, Sorry. Oh yeah, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one of the things that is just a comment that I wanted to say, I'm very new to the Drupal community. I, I began my uh, position earlier this year, and before that I was in a Shopify agency. World's different. Um, and one of the things that really impressed me, you know, we're talking about new community members and when they get into the community, like what hurdles like are you trying to cross or, or cross? We're talking about LinkedIn engagement and listservs and that kind of thing. And one of the things I want to touch on is uh, excitement and passion. That was, I'm going to shout out a new year because I was my first, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, my first uh, DrupalCon in Portland. And um, I wasn't, you know, I've been to Shopify events and that kind of thing. And I'm so sort of, I wasn't expecting the type of feeling of like, like nerdiness. If that makes sense, <laughs> like, like you kind of like you have a community, you found your people, and when I met Noob and I was like, yeah, it's my first Drupal con. He's like, what? You know, that is so cool. Like, let's get your picture. Let's do all stuff. I was like, okay. You know, so I wanted to say too that that's something really special, and that's something that is a competitive advantage from a marketing perspective as a marketer. Um, that I do not see in other CMS platforms. So that's something that I thought was worth mentioning. Mike. Maybe we can expand on that. Maybe like there's an opportunity at TrupleCon to do like a Drupal Buddies program. Like maybe, and I'm, I'm thinking off the cuff right here, but maybe there's an opportunity for like a DA to say like, all right, well, hey, these are our new uh, attendees, our first time attendees. Send some emails to them and say, hey, would you like to participate in Drupal Buddies? And then, like, of course, have volunteers, and hopefully they wouldn't get matched with me, and etc. <laughs> uh, so, there used to be a first time welcoming session at DrupalCon where, you know, there's a reception and there's newcomers, and then throw in some old hats in there to meet, and, you know, like, oh, you made this person, you made this module. So I think that the buddy system or something like that, you know, bringing that back, I, I think I really, when I got to participate as someone in that welcoming uh, reception, it, it was like a, a sense of pride, like, yeah, yeah welcome to the community, and, like, let's take a picture, and like, oh, hey, you should meet this other person here, and you're like, here, here, this is Dries, and this is Tim, or, you know, whatnot. Yeah. I, I think that, that I like, really like doing that, and I kind of miss that. That, that wasn't there. Of course, it was kind of exclusive because there was new people only. Uh, and I think we could maybe broaden it and broaden that reception a little bit. Uh, I think it got kind of replaced with the sponsor 
welcome and include as well, and I think that's important too. No, that's a great comment. That's definitely something we can do on that, on that, that new first time entree and how we do something. Um, I think we're at time. Uh, one question. How many people before you entered the room today knew, uh, knew had met or had heard of a new before you entered the room? That's not here. <laughs> okay, right. So this is what I'm saying about energy. You mentioned energy. I think that's fantastic. That's like the intangible thing that gets excited. A new is like a ball of energy about Drupal <laughs> globally. And I think that's a great point. That's what we need more of. And that's the intangible thing that helps revitalize local communities. So thank you, Noob. Thank you, our speakers, for, for the session. <laughs> Go ahead. Last comment. Sorry, playing the advertisement. If you want to do any of these bullet points, to do so, you can be a mentor. And I'm giving a off later today about how to be a mentor in the Drupal community, an open source mentor. Uh, so yeah, you can take off a lot of these things just uh, by becoming a mentor. Uh, uh, 4 p.m. Thank you. 4 p.m. Bob on mentorship. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Have a great conference.